as we take the time and as we look at God's Word, there's a transformation that happens in our life. And it's like I said before, you can't always tell that that transformation is happening in your life. But when you take the time and you sit down with God's Word and you allow God's Word to sit down in you, change is inevitable. We got to fall in love with God's Word again. When you say, Lord, I want, to in I want my faith increased, what you're literally saying is, Lord, I want my word life to increase. Because you can't have one without the other. Amen. So God wants our hearts and our mouths filled with his word. He wants us speaking it, confessing it over and over again until we get it deep in our heart. You know, I was looking at the Greek word uh, uh, confession. It's homolego and it means to agree with God. It means to say the same thing God says about you. So when your heart and your mouth is filled with the word of God, you're agreeing with what God says about your situation, and your life has no choice except to come into alignment with the will of God. When you're speaking out God's word, your life has no choice except to come into alignment. How are we going to be women of faith without the Word of God? How are you going to change your family? How are you going to change your family? How are you going to deal with the situations that you're dealing with with your children? You know, I'm, 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 people are always calling me, seeking counseling like I'm the one with the answers. Like I'm, the, I'm the one with the, I'm not the one with the answers. And any answer that I give you, I got out of the Word of God. But we put so much dependency on people and not enough dependency on God. And we have to learn to go to the Word of God when we're confronted with situations, to allow the Word of God to speak to us and faith to rise up in our heart so that we have the answers that we need to go out and do what God has called us to do. Amen. We got to get in the Word. Go back to hearing it, listening to it, speaking it over and over and over again until transformation comes in our life. You know, I had done this, did this sermon many years ago called Dig Until You Hit Gold. And what I was talking about in there is many times when we go to God's Word, we go and we read it on the surface. And when you go to the Word and you're just reading it on the surface, usually you'll get blessed, but you know, it, that'll be about it. But when you get in the Word and you do what the Word says, when you look at the Word, I mean bend over and you look at it, and you take in all that the Word is, that's when transformation starts happening in your life, and you begin to change from the inside out. He's drawing us back to the Word so that we can be women of faith. And no matter what we're confronted with, no matter what we're going through, we have the answer because it's in the Word of God. And I'm not afraid to use my faith to trust and stand and believe God. And in the face of opposition, in the face of debt, in the face of death, I know based on God's Word that He's going to bring me out of it. He's going to bring me through it. Amen. Amen. Second thing we've got to have is a commitment to the love of God. Oh, my goodness gracious. Should I talk about it? Should I say it? Should I? I got to come down for that one. A commitment to the love of God. And this one is hard for many believers because we don't understand 
that your love walk is affecting your faith walk. You got to be committed to love in spite of. You're going to have opportunities to get in the flesh with somebody. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know any place because I live my life amongst the church. And I don't, I don't, you know, other than trying to win somebody to Christ, I don't spend a lot of time with people in the world. But the church is, we got some, some, some issues. We got some things we need to be dealing with. We got attitudes. We walking by one another, we're not talking, we're breaking relationship with one another. But we want to preach the house down. But we don't want to walk in love. I have never in my life seen so many spiritual babies. Okay, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. Help us. Walking by one another, we ain't speaking. You can't correct nobody. You can't correct nobody. You can't correct nobody. You can't correct nobody. You can't correct the saints. And the Bible says that the word of God is given for reproof and rebuke. You can't rebuke them, Victoria. We can't, you can't rebuke them. You can't reprove them and you can't rebuke them. Because they fall out with you. And God is saying, until you deal, well, he said it to me, until you deal with your attitude. Talking about anoint me, Jesus. When Romans 5, 5 says that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, you're anointed to love. Anoint that. Work that. Too many, too many of us in strife. We in strife with one another. We walking by one another, talking about one another. Mean. Mean. You don't anoint me, Jesus. We got to be committed to love. You got to be committed to love. Some things are not going to go the way you want them to go because you are in strife. And the Bible says that where strife exists, there is contention and every evil work. I don't even know why I'm in this. You know, it's like I told you last year, I only get one year to slap you around. I only get one. No, I'm teasing. I only get to be with you once a year. And I want to put my heart in front of you. And sometimes there are things that I want to say that I, you know, that I hold back on because I'm, a, I'm concerned. That if I say the wrong thing, somebody's going to get in their, their feelings. But for us to go where God is trying to take us, you can't wear your shoulder on your sleeve. You can't wear your shoulder on your, is that right? Am I saying it? Your, <laughs> you with me? You can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. 
You can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. You would be absolutely amazed at some of the things that people have said to me. Absolutely amazed at some of the things that people have said to me. You know what I do? I smile and walk away. I heard somebody say, you better than me. Why? Because the love of God is poured in my heart. And that love that's on the inside of me constrains me. And when I want to act out, when I want to retaliate, the love of God on the inside of me is saying, hold your meal, girl, hold your meal. Don't let it go. And I'm going to share this with you. There's not been one time that I refused to get over into strife with someone that God didn't prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Not one time, not one time when I made the decision to love, he has blessed me. Is it easy to love? No, it ain't easy to love. You know somebody talking about you in your face, saying stuff, and then they get behind your back and they talk about you. No, it's not easy to love, but you can do it by faith. You can do it by faith. And let me say this to you, just because you, you know, when you make a decision to forgive somebody, I'm talking about faith. I'm laying a foundation so Pastor Dee Dee and Cynthia, they can, you know, that you can hang from the rafters with them. <laughs> but I'm going to lay this foundation for you because what you don't want is you don't want a cracked foundation. You don't want them building on something that you can't, you can't hold on to because you have challenges in your life walking in love with other people. We have, to, we have to address this. You can't shout over this. You can't hobo she over that. <laughs> Strife has one mission, and it's to undermine the plan of God in your life. The question then becomes, how much are you willing to pay? How much are you willing to pay? I'm not willing to lose anything that God has for me. That's why I'm quick to say, it's all right, forget about it. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna walk in and I'm not even gonna think about it again. I'm, I'm, there's things, to, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, today. Sitting in that seat, I had to say, I, I love, I walk in love, I walk in love. You have to be committed to love to walk by faith. Y'all hear me? Yes. And so let me just say this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my seat. Band, wherever y'all are, come on up. I don't know why it gets like this for me with women in worship, where I just, you know, because I wanna come in and I wanna scissor teach. But it's, I always end up right here. Do you notice that? I always end up right here. And it's the heart of the shepherd. That's what it is. It's the shepherd's heart that wants to see you better, that wants to see you in, walk in all that God has for you. But you've got to get your foundation right. And what I want to do is, Daryl, Daryl, get, somebody get on the thing. If you, I want everybody just bow your head right now. Lord, we want to walk by faith. But there's some of us in here that are in strife. Somebody upset us, said something about us. 
There's nothing that you can do about people talking about you. You just found out about that one. People are always going to talk about you. It's something that's just a part, it's part of the course. It doesn't feel good to find out that people have been talking about you. But make up your mind that you're not going to be held back by what others have to say or what others think about you. I, I'm, I know from experience, I'm that one. I don't like people being mad at me. I don't like being in strife. I don't like confrontation. But when your heart is right, that's what God requires. He requires your heart to be right. And so I just want to encourage you with every head bowed in this room. If you're in strife with somebody and you've got some things going on, you know, wives, you can be in strife with your husband, your children, friends. I want to challenge you. Let's get it right. Father, in the name of Jesus. God. Yeah. There's so much, Father, that we know that you desire to do in our life. And there are things that have gotten in the way, hindering me from moving and advancing forward. Some things have even clouded my ears so I can't hear you the way that I used to be able to hear you. And so, Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you'll deal with my heart. My heart. My heart. I'm not going to think about the other person. My heart. I'm asking you Help me overcome the weakness of my flesh. Help me to draw out of the wells of my spirit. The love that you've placed down there, Father, help me to pull it up out of me. So that I can move into all the blessings that you have for my life. And so that I can be the conduit of blessing that you desire me to be. foundation father it's important to me to have it where I need it to be or where you need it to be so I forgive I let it drop I let it go I want you to strengthen my mind and when I have symptoms that come that make me feel like I didn't forgive. Father, I thank you for reminding me I forgave. And that's just a symptom. It's not the truth. It's just a symptom. And so we thank you for working in our lives as only you can. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand. daughter's father and um, we were actually um, we became friends and he had a different type of lifestyle that I lived um, I was a good girl <laughs> and he kind of turned me out to a different style of life drugs dealing I, I, it was just totally different I mean I had it all but I didn't know me I lost me in the process when I met him because he was a, a street guy. And me, coming from my background, I saw it, but I never engaged in it. And when I learned, when I, when I, he taught me certain things, and it was intriguing to, to be in his lifestyle because I never seen it, well, experienced it. It was like reading a book, one of those urban books. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't a good, um, 
lifestyle. But to others, they saw us as, oh, we were balling. Um, my mom made a statement and called me hood rich at one point. She said, oh, you guys just hood rich. Uh, and she stopped talking to me and she ended up moving away. And I was left by myself with him, in which he became abusive at one point. Um, and um, the day, um, October, October 18th of 2014, I ended up, um, we got, he, he was cheating on me. And the girl called my phone and I, I snapped and we got to fight it and I ended up stabbing him. When I got um, that day that on October 18th, that we had the fight, I stabbed him, he ended up going to prison. And then his business of selling drugs was left in the hands of me. And I started to deal the drugs because I never put my hands on and dealt with it before. But then I start, it was like, I'm gonna say it like this, and this is how it really felt like a demon literally start taking over me and went with this lifestyle. I mean, I became somebody. I, it was like I really transformed into somebody totally different, living this lifestyle. And um, I'm uh, the the day I got arrested, that was when it sunk in and hit me like a blow, a strike to my gut. And it was like, dude, this is not you. Um, I couldn't go to nobody else. I ain't have no mama, my, my family. Everybody deserted me. You know, my whole family left me. So I didn't have nobody to go to. And I'm like, I could have rolled up that clear road, but instead I turned and landed in prison because that's where it left me. I went to prison. I did um, two years in prison. Um, and that was, the, I can't say the worst experience of my life, but it was the most life-changing experience that I ever experienced. Third or fourth week of me being there, and somebody said, um, Christy, come downstairs with me. She said, this is gonna be the best experience of your life if you come in this place. If this, I guarantee if you come, you ain't gonna never go back. And I saw, I was like, okay. So I took my Bible and I went downstairs. And when I met Pastor Melva, her heart was so open. And then she was just like, the her love, it, it radiated off me, you heard for her. And, it, and when she spoke, it was like life, you know, hearing it. It was like, okay, so every, since that day, I didn't miss a, a, a service. Every time she come, I mean, I was the first person standing at the doors. Uh, we, me and another, a couple other girls, we'll stand at the doors and be sitting at the front. When she come in, we sitting at the front. And every week, it was a blessing. I mean, it was so depressing some days being there. And the days when she come, we knew she was coming. So we prepared ourselves all week. We knew we was gonna see Pastor Melba and everybody that came with her. So that's how, and I never stopped going there from the first, from the, up until the time I left. And some days, I mean, her voice was powerful. Every time she comes, she, she, she brought the heat. I mean, literally, it was, the room was never dull. She always came and brought power, and it, it, it impacted me. It, it actually helped me. We were so ready for her to come and see us. When she didn't come, it was so sad. Everybody, well, you know, I gave her grief. You, you said you was coming last week. What's wrong? Why you didn't come? We needed you. And I told her, I tell her, I say, every time you come, you bring light to this place. Your spirit, it linger. So, so you, you can't, you can't miss a day, you know, for the women that's there because a lot of tragic stuff happened in those doors and all of the demons that roam that place, you know. When you come, it's helping. It helps us, and it, it gives us motivation to want to live. Um, I, I find myself spreading the word to people, but when I talk to them, everybody listen. You know, and it's that same kind of um, spirit that Pastor Melva released to, to me by her going every week to the prison. It helped. It helped. It kept somebody sane. It helped. It kept somebody from committing suicide. It helped. It helped somebody from um, from from losing themselves. 
you know, and they were serious when they came. It wasn't just um, just talk. Her heart was in it. So because when you have somebody who's genuine, who heart is in it, why not so? Hi, this is Melva Henderson. I'm holding in my hand my newest series from Henderson House Publishing called the Faith Life Series. In this series, any believer who desires to grow and develop in their walk of faith, they can do so. You know, it's not designed to take the place of the Word of God, but it's designed to be an addendum to the Word of God to help you grow so that your faith can be strengthened. Books like Hold to Your Confession of Faith, The Authority of the Believer, and Fearless Faith, just to name a few. There's seven books in this series, and I would love for you to have every last one of them. If you're looking to grow in your walk of faith and develop in the things of God, this Faith Life series is for you. You can secure seven, all seven books by giving us a call at area code 414-962-0600 or melvahenderson.org. God bless you.